yeah, let me show you around, show you my process for creating something like this. So you can create some cool moody renders like this one. Alright, so firstly, the hack. This guy is a random image that I just downloaded. Here, you see, it. it's just this image right here. Just drag and drop it in, alright? And basically all that I've done here, is I've taken the alpha mat, plugged into the alpha, and I've just got this guy's color plugged into a black color ramp so that we don't get much color because we just want him to be a silhouette essentially. This is what the scene looks like outside of the camera view. Now you can also see that the way that I've done this ground here is it's actually quite low quality when we zoom all the way in. But even zoomed out a bit, that looks pretty good already. And it is honestly a bit too scaled up for my liking. A person would realistically need more of this size in comparison with the pavement. However, this is a render with the theme Colossal, and so we're having a really small guy here, and then we're having a lot of big elements around him to contrast. And also the size of the um, wet area, it just works really well with the heart reflection in the water. And also um, this guy has an area light behind him, and it basically provides this nice little circle of light, and it creates this, this nice, um, nice clean crystal reflection of the guy, which adds a nice line of symmetry in our art piece. Now let's go and take the individual elements. So firstly we've got this bone over here which we can't really see any texture on. It's really just, they're really just shapes and we've got them just like sitting around basically like they're kind of like cur curving around closing in on the viewer but at the same time from the viewer's perspective we're opening out into the scene. We start off closed in here, these corners are kind of cut out and then we open out our eyes, the eyes are lead and we see our guy and then our lights eyes lead up through the reflection through the guy and we see the main main subject which is the heart and then uh, by association we see the big handprint on the glass which is quite irregular and goes with this whole theme of colossal or objects which are way larger than they should be. Now the way that I've done this ground texture just quickly um, in case you're interested is this is the node setup for it. So I've taken this texture off of textures.com so firstly we've used it for bump, as you can see we've got some pretty noticeable bump on here. You can see we've given it some subdivisions and then I've also applied a subdivision surface modifier over here. And we've given it a little bit of displacement. The actual geometry here is um, actually being deformed because with the bump map, right, it looks deformed from a perspective but if you go down flat you'll actually see nothing coming out. Whereas with this, if I go down here, you can see that there's actually um, bump coming out of the ground. If we take this displacement out, you can see that everything is really flat. The main thing that's important, which creates this cool reflection, is it's fed into a color ramp, and that goes into our roughness. And you can see we've crunched this color ramp really tight, and if I go and view what this is doing, basically these white areas are um, fully rough, so they're not giving much reflection, and then these bits, they are like pretty pretty clear reflections, which is just quite um, cool compositionally. Like, I kind of ran into it by accident, but whenever you're dealing with these kinds of sliders, like, you always want to, um, you see, this is what it would have been by default. Like, this looks, this looks all right. If we go, um, this, this does look all right, but you can see that, um, everything's pretty glossy here. I think with PBR textures especially, these, um, sliders aren't used enough. These color ramps are one of the most powerful tools in the Node Editor, and I highly recommend you use them more if you don't already, because you can take these, um, awesome textures, frankly, these awesome textures, but people usually just feed them straight into rough and don't really give it a second thought and we we do that and we get something which is just a lot less than what it could be if we just introduce a color ramp and we just crunch values together essentially um, we don't always want to be maxing out things because we can start getting weird artifacts or dragging the audience's attention away from things that they're meant to be looking at just try cranking your numbers to the extreme even if you think it'll look ridic ridiculous just try it and um, I swear that, like you'll you'll find out um, some stuff that you thought would look really bad will actually look quite good Alright, let's go to the main subject now. We can see that this is basically just set up in an array. The the background goes out this far too. Like honestly, past this area, you can, the audience can't really see, but I just have it there for peace of mind really. If you want to optimize the, you can cut it out, but I think it's a little bit better for atmosphere. Onto our camera real quick. I have a focal length of 85mm, which I quite commonly use for my renders. Like it's quite a safe um, focal length to go with for looking cinematic. Um, if you want to achieve something specific, like a phone looking shot then I'm um, going with like a low thing like 16 or 24 millimeters can look pretty good or if you want a product render 400 millimeters is quite good for that because you end up with quite a orthographic looking camera it's quite subtle um, subtle f-stops there I usually go for something around 1.4 and get some really strong depth of field but on um, this one I wanted to try something a bit different and I think it, it, it's worked all right now this model here I've just got this um, these simple surface imperfections um, textures which are just mapped 
quite poorly honestly onto it. I've got a scratches and I've got um, a little um, dust map as well and they're just plugged in through color ramps as before. Like I think that this allows you to suspend disbelief a little bit better, having some grunge on it to um, tie in with the environment a bit better. This guy is interesting, I have plugged um, this cool handprint texture and I've inverted it and then plugged it into a color ramp and basically created a little roughness mask which looks so it looks like there's a handprint on the glass and um, big plot twist there's actually no glass I used to have it but it actually it just made stuff look blurry and I couldn't get my um, imperfections my dust imperfections to work properly on it so I just removed it KV3D actually um, said about putting some, uh, a handprint on the glass and um, there wasn't any glass there so the fact that he assumed that there was glass I sort of thought oh I'll probably be fine if I don't have any glass and I think I think it's all right um, because I don't want to blur out this um, nice looking heart model which I just got off Sketchfab I messed around with the normal map and added a bump, but I think that they've already done a good job at getting a lot out of the bump map. Like, it looks grotesque and meaty already, and like, it has nice texture on it. I used um, a really cool um, add on called Mossify, um, or just a uh, Geonode setup really that I downloaded, and I've got a really basic red texture on on here and like all of this looks pretty bad like this is a, just a simple pipe that I made a while ago it's way too high poly for what it is and I made these very simple little like vents for them to connect to just to tie it in so that uh, we don't have the pipe just like clipping into the environment like it still doesn't look great but it's just better to have to tie tie in all the elements um, and connect connect two very different elements from each other the heart to this model last thing I want to go over quickly is the lighting setup that I've got I've got quite a few lights in the scene, a lot more than I would normally do, and I wouldn't usually recommend this many. I think usually just stick to a few simple ones, but I wanted to really fine tune it. I've got a couple of these lights here, which are just um, highlighting the um, bones a little bit, highlighting the pillars, otherwise you can't really see them at all. Like, I mean, they're not really meant to be seen too much, but you can see if I hide these two, we lose a little bit of the ambient lighting off to the side. Um, the main light source is this area light back here. This is creating a backlight. I'd highly recommend using backlights for scenes if you want to create something moody. Basically, like it just creates like silhouettes and all of that. The only reason that this is illuminated is because I've got a couple of additional point lights here, which you can see if I remove them, we just end up with um, quite a strong silhouettes on everything, which I think if you're going for that, that's cool. And this still looks very cool in its own regard. I just wanted to bring out a little bit of coloring on the heart and also the handprint. Um, because without these lights the handprint gets uh, a little bit more hidden I guess. But I think I'll try both ways, I'll render out a few different versions I think. And I've got this area light which is a little bit more subtle, but it is directly behind the guy because um, otherwise the guy is a little bit hidden and this illuminates not only the guy but also his reflection and then the reflection of the heart and this puddle gets brought out a lot, this leading line up towards the heart just along center frame so it's a really good um, compositional piece. And then the last two lights are very subtle, um, I've just got these uh, two spotlights at the top and they just have a simple caustics texture plugged into them, so they're fake caustics but they still look decent and I've just got them both set up up here. I had them in there additionally, like initially and I think that they do more good than harm and so I just have them in there. By the way, if you want to see how I um, modeled this um, this thing, I made it in about an uh, hour and a half or two hours, um, and I've got a time lapse up, so I'll just link that. Yeah, that's about it for this render. And thanks so much for watching. If you've watched the whole thing, then you're an absolute legend. I uh, really hope you got something out of this. Um, and let me know if you have any questions at all about this. I'll be more than happy to answer. Comment down below if you have any suggestions for videos that you think I should make as well. I'm working on a new video for next week already, um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that one too. And yeah, thank you so much for watching again. Goodbye.